Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be going over the week 3 concepts for Physics 111. So starting off with vector addition, the reason why we need to go over this is because it's not as easy to add vector quantities as it is scalar quantities. For instance, if we wanted to add 5 meters north and 2 meters west, it wouldn't be as easy as just adding 5 and 2 because we also need to account for the direction of each vector. And basically, when we do add these vectors together, the sum of the vectors is going to be called the resultant. And there's both a graphical and a mathematical method of doing this, and we're going to see both in the example below. So the example says, what is the sum of 12 meters north and 5 meters east? So I like to start by drawing out a picture. So what we have here is a vector going 12 meters north, followed by one going 5 meters east. So basically north, east, south, west. And what we're looking for is the distance or the displacement from the point we started at and the point we ended at. So what we want is this here. And this is what we call our resultant. So the graphical method would have us draw everything out to scale and keep everything proportional. And then we would use a ruler to measure the length of the resultant and then a protractor to measure the degrees um, relative to one of the other sides in order to describe the direction of the resultant. But we're going to go through this using the mathematical method. And basically, we can see that this is a triangle. So we're going to use both the Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa in order to find our magnitude and our direction. So starting with the Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we take both side lengths, square them, and add them together, they'll be equal to the hypotenuse squared. And in this case, our resultant is the hypotenuse, so that's what we're looking for. So we're going to write out 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. And when we do the math, we get c equals 13 meters. So now we have our magnitude, and we need our direction as well in order to give the full answer for this question. So in order to find our direction, we're going to want to find this angle. And in order to find the angle, we're going to use Sokotoa. And we see that we have both an opposite and an adjacent side to the angle. So we're going to want to use tangent. So tangent theta is equal to our opposite side over our adjacent side, which in this case is 5 over 12. So when we solve for theta, we get theta is equal to inverse tangent of 5 over 12 which gives us about 23 degrees. Now we have both our magnitude and our degrees. Now we just have to piece them together in order to get both our magnitude and direction in a complete answer. So basically, the way we're going to write our answer is we have a length of 13 meters at 23 degrees east of north. So this is how we would write our answer. And just to explain a little better, if we were to imagine an arrow pointing directly north, and then we were to go 23 degrees east from that arrow, we would get our resultant. And that's why we say 23 degrees east of north. All right, next we're going to be going through a couple different rules for vector addition. So basically, addition is both commutative and associative which means, for instance, if we're adding a plus b, we could also add b plus a and nothing would change. And similarly, if we grouped a and b and added to c, and then instead grouped b and c together and added it to a, in both cases we would still get the same answer. And then some rules for vector subtraction. Basically, we don't really subtract vectors. Instead, we treat the problem like an addition problem. So we're going to assign a negative 1 to the vector which is being subtracted, meaning it has the same magnitude, but it's going to be facing in the opposite direction. And below, we're going to go through an example in which we add a couple different vectors in order to find the final resultant. So to start off, we see that we first move 3 meters east, followed by going 5 meters north. Then we're going to travel 7 meters to the west. Now we're going 4 meters north. And then once again, 2 meters west, followed by 5 meters south. And lastly, we're going 2 meters east. 
So our resultant is going to be the displacement or the straight line distance from our initial point to our final point. So that's going to be this right here. Now in order to find the magnitude of our resultant, we're going to treat this like a triangle like we did earlier. So we're going to extend a line going 4 meters south and 4 meters east. So now we're working with a triangle in which the resultant is our hypotenuse. So in order to find the magnitude or the length of the resultant, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 4 squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to c squared. So our resultant ends up being around 5.7 meters. Then now we just need the direction of the resultant. And in order to get this, we're going to use our Sokotoa relationships. And here we have an opposite and an adjacent side relative to this angle. So we're going to use tangent. So we have tangent theta is equal to our opposite over our adjacent side. And when we solve for theta, we end up getting 45 degrees. So we know that our resultant is 5.7 meters long at 45 degrees north of west. Because if we were to draw an arrow facing west, and we went 45 degrees upward, we would get our resultant. All right, next, rather than drawing out all these vectors, we're gonna do it a little more mathematically using this vector notation in which we let i be a unit vector in the positive x direction and j be a unit vector in the positive y direction. So in order to better explain this, we're gonna revisit the problem we did earlier using this vector notation. So to start off with three meters east, we see that east would be on the x-axis and facing in the positive x direction. So we're gonna use i and it's gonna be a positive i. So in this case, three meters east would become three i. Now five meters north. North is gonna be on our y-axis and it's gonna be facing in the positive y direction. So we're gonna to wanna to use j. So this would be a positive five j. Next, we have seven meters west. So west is on our x-axis, but it's facing in the negative direction. So we're going to name this negative 7i. i is for x-axis. Next, we have 4 meters north. This is once again facing in the positive y direction. So here we have a positive 4j. Next, we have 2 meters west, once again in the negative x direction. So we're going to have negative 2i. Next, we have 5 meters south. This is in the negative y direction. So we're going to have negative 5j. And lastly, we have 2 meters east, which is in the positive x direction. So this is going to be a positive 2i. So now that we have everything written out in our vector notation, we're going to add all these numbers together. We're going to separate our i's and our j's in order to make it a little easier. So basically, we're going to start by adding 3i minus 7i minus 2i and plus 2i and to that we're going to add 5j plus 4j minus 5j and when we work this out we end up getting negative 4i plus 4j and basically now we have two vectors one which is facing in the negative x direction and one which is facing in the positive y direction. So we draw this out just as it's written. We have a vector going in the negative x direction, four units, followed by a vector going in the positive y direction, four units. So now we're gonna draw our resultant, which is always drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. So in this case, our resultant is here. And now we're back where we were before. So next we would just use our Pythagorean theorem followed by Sokotoa in order to find the magnitude and the direction of this resultant. And we ended up getting earlier 5.7 meters at 45 degrees north of west. All right, next we're gonna be talking about vector resolution, which is basically working backwards from a given resultant. So in these cases, we're gonna be given our resultant and we're going to be asked to find the path 
or the vectors which were added in order to get that resultant. So we're going to learn how to do this both graphically and mathematically. And on the left we see that our given resultant is 10 miles long and faces in a direction 53 degrees north of east. So on the right I started drawing the resultant and as we can see the resultant is supposed to be 10 miles long. So assuming that everything is up to scale we would draw our first vector from the tail of our resultant and then our second vector from the head of our first vector. And this we would now use just the units we're given on the graph paper in order to predict the length of each vector. And in this case, this one is six units long and this one is eight units long. And we know that our units are miles. So in this case, our answer could be written as 6i plus 8j or six miles east and eight miles north. All right, next we're gonna solve this mathematically. And basically in order to solve this mathematically, we're just gonna use SOHCAHTOA. So starting off with just knowing that we have a vector facing 10 miles at 53 degrees north of east, we can use our SOHCAHTOA relationships in order to find our opposite and our adjacent sides relative to that 53 degree angle. So in order to find the opposite side, we're gonna to wanna to use sine. So in order to set this up, we would take the sine of 53 degrees is equal to our opposite side over 10 miles. And when we work this up, we would get that the opposite side is equal to eight miles. And then next we would wanna use cosine in order to solve for our adjacent side. And cosine of 53 is equal to our adjacent side over 10 miles when we work this out, our adjacent side would be equal to six miles. So we get the same answer using either method. All right, lastly, we're gonna be talking about relative motion. And what's important to realize is that all motion is relative to some point. So we've actually already been dealing with relative motion. We just haven't noticed it because we made all our motion relative to the ground. So it didn't mess up any of our calculations. However, when we have multiple moving objects, we really have to pay attention to relative motion. And in order to better understand the notation for relative motion, I have a couple examples below. So we see that VBA, which is read as the velocity of object B relative to object A, is equal to the negative velocity of object A relative to object B. And below we have an example just to better understand these different relationships and the notation for the velocities. So a school bus moving eastward passes a stationary observer at 15 meters per second. A student on the bus walks backwards at three meters per second. What is the speed of the student relative to the observer? And what is the speed of the observer relative to the student? So we start off writing what we know. We know that our velocity of the bus relative to the observer is equal to 15 meters per second. And we also know that the velocity of the student relative to the bus, because the student is moving on the bus, is negative three meters per second, because he's moving backwards on the bus. And we're asked for the velocity of the student relative to the observer, and then the velocity of the observer relative to the student. So to start off with the velocity of the student relative to the observer, we would need to start with the velocity of the bus relative to the observer. And then once we have this, we can add the velocity of the student relative to the bus. Because here we have the bus relative to the observer and here the student on the bus. So therefore we have the student relative to the observer. So then the velocity of the student relative to the observer is equal to 15 meters per second plus a negative 3 meters per second. So the velocity of the student relative to the observer is a positive 12 meters per second or 12 meters per second in the forward direction. And then the velocity of our observer relative to our student 
is just going to be the opposite because if we think about it, it would be the um, student's perspective of the observer moving away from it in the backward direction. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.